Now the oil's off. I got this motor all wired up and clean. Made my own, um, found some nuts, made my own um, straps, had a copper wire. That's it. Runs quite well. Runs really good in this little power train. Just gonna hook the wires back up because I had to pull the part, pull the motor out here, take it in the center, give it a really good blast I can press there. It was dusty. Now I reckon I'm gonna make each of these when I, when I get some good potentiometers and some buttons and an arm um, control box. I'm gonna run this like that one. Make a, set up a control box for these eventually. When I get all the parts and the right potential motors, I'll um, have these separately controlled instead of just using the inbuilt buttons. Because I can't get this potential motor to work still. The rotary encoder, that is. That's a rotary encoder. That used to work for the speed. we are going to use this multifunction buttons instead. You have to hold it. It's not too bad, I suppose. It's like that one where you hold it and it goes up in speed. So that way. Hey, the button there. I didn't know that. Yeah, there's a button behind that. Where the potential the, the radio encoder normally goes. There's a button behind it. Sounds like it anyway. I wonder what that does. But yeah. This driver is a lot more professional than that one, this one here. This is more of a professional drive. That one here is more of a home hobbyist type of drive. It's got an add a brand fan. Big ass capacitors. What brand they are. Jiang, Jiang Lu, Jiang Lu or something. I want to pop this out one day and put an RJ. I need an RJ45 converter to USB. Plug it in that. It's got it there. I can just snap that out and plug it into the um, PLC that way. It's also got one for this um, on here as well. And there. Anyway, we'll uh, wire this motor back up and show you a demonstration. It's actually a lot more smoother on this drive, this sort of motor. It's a very smooth, quiet running motor. But the um, the rotor and the shaft get a bit hot. The frequency in induces a bit too much heat in that shaft. Because I haven't programmed that parameters in this drive at all, so... Once I set this motor up on this drive properly, that should take care of the, um, the rotor heating problem. Nice big ass resistor in there for discharging the capacitor bank. I thought a little bit of a tear down on this. See what it's like inside, quality wise, for real. This top bit comes off. We have a good look inside and have a good detailed look at this thing with its cover off. Because it's a quite cool hair there, mate. It comes off there, it should lift off, and it unplugs off there. A wire goes up in there somewhere. Set up in here and wires on there. Oh yeah, have to un unplug that one. And that whole top will lift off and unplug off there. Okay, if you was this design reminds me of quite lo a lot like a delta drive because this module here can be replaced if these buttons get broken at some point in its life you can just buy this part and replace it with a new control pad I like that idea same with this one but only this one oh yeah it is replaceable this is replaceable as well you just plug a new um, interface in this drive and you can replace a whole interface and it's all the same same with this one the Delta one just go on, but this one just clips on. So we've got Jang High brand capacitors, but the little ones here are 105 degrees Celsius rated um, Rubicons. Not a bad little drive. There's a while I've pulled apart just to see what the coil is like and what quality components this thing uses. What are the um, RGBTs down there? The rectifier. It's pretty well set out. And this is an earthing strap, so that's, they, they get, that gets connected up to this board up here for a common ground. RJ45 there, which is behind this little door here, which you snap off if you want to use that. Carefully that back like that, carefully. Interface board there, this is all the, um, that's the interface pad. 
module on, the, on that on that one. And this is all the programming is on this board here. This is all your PLC and other interface for here. And a little relay there, which will click to turn on a turn on a braking resistor if it has one connected. We've got a little board here. 8K R drive version 20. 12th week 2000, uh, 24th week 2012. Little transformer there, power supply. 400 volts, there are the microfarads. 85 degrees Celsius, there's all 100, uh, 105. 1.5 kilowatt model ticked off on the board. Little like uh, capacitor there, 600 volt DC, 0.22 microfarad. Some shunts. Little relay there which clicks. So if I want to hit the stop button on something, the motor would stop with that one here. It goes click and it puts a brake on. This is just a discharge to the motor. And this one even relays what clicks to turn it on. To turn the brake on. Song Chuan. 24 volt relay, 7 amp to 150 volt, 50 60 hertz. There we are. I can't see what goes. Uh, components that are there, are they? I can't see the numbers on them. The circuit board's in the way. Little LED. There is a small thin coating of plastic on this board too for um, a moist environment. We've got a temperature probe in there, on here. Temperature probe there. It's quite well made actually. There's the old logo powertrain. AK6KEYES T3 8KR Drive V2 STC branded uh, LED segment driver for the display. This is the display part of it here. Yeah, it's a rotary encoder, that thing. That would probably be part of what drives a rotary encoder as well. Three pins there. Looks like it goes to this chip on the other side, the double sided board. Yeah, digital rotary encoder. It's quite a high quality little one as well. And the heat stick on that regulator there, which is for this. That powers this module here. Put that back on, have finished with that. They can go back on. I don't know how the earthing's brown. For an earthing strap, it's brown, not the right colour code. C189. And that's the driver for the uh, keypad. Some jumpers in there. I'm not sure what they do. Have a look at the book, there's more jumpers here too. I know this one has the jumpers in here for the um, internal and external controls. And these must be here on the inside. You've got to take this, clip the front off and to change the um, setting for it. Yeah, there's a thin coating of plastic on the um, on this board, which is good for moisture uh, moisture resistance. There you are. It's actually quite a well made. Uh, now that I've looked into it, it's actually quite a, a nicely made little drive. At the same price as that one. You get a pretty good drive for the price. Anyway, I'll put that one back together. Wire it back up. All back together. Another quick test at 50 hertz. Just doesn't. This one remembers what speed I left it at last time. This one always goes back to 50 hertz after power down. I'm gonna make a terminal cover for this thing next. That's my next job. Make a terminal cover. Quite good torque on this one. Which just worked at the speed. Down the 5 hertz it works down to, and it's got plenty of torque at that level. That's. Ugh, I can't even stop that. Very smooth, actually. Very smooth. The 
that's minimum. If I got any lower than five hertz, I got no torque. Oh, I can just stop it. Oh, yowch. The key, um, woodruff keyway on the shaft just cuts me bloody hand, like a potato peeler. Gotta be careful with that. I'm gonna try and support the motor too. I stopped it. That's a fair bit of effort to stop that. At full speed. Very well balanced. Very quiet and smooth on motor. limit on this drive. I set the limit at 200 hertz. There is not getting hot, so that's good. Fans moving from there. There's motors of pretty heavy duty fans on them too, which is good. And they're quite well made motors, these um, little Chinese made CMGs. Yeah, that's the good. bearings in these motors are not designed for high RPM. This only ramps it down. Notice it doesn't use a wheel of a click and slow it down to a halt like this one either. This one puts a big um, discharge to the motor. That's why you hear a, a grunt, a big, yeah, a big um, bassy grunt to it and it goes click and stops. This one doesn't do that. Yeah, the, the rotor, oh that's hot. Yeah, the shaft gets hot. The bearings aren't getting hot, it's just a shaft from the rotor that's getting hot. Yeah, I think that drive's not set up right. It's putting, too, it's inducing too much heat in the rotor. Interesting. Hey, it does it with this motor though. Okay, that's very interesting. Hmm, might try and program the parameters of that motor in this drive, see if that makes a difference. Anyway, next job, make a terminal cover for this thing. Thanks for watching.